What's up, sassy gamers, and welcome to another Got Our Attention podcast. This is uh, season three, episode 12. Uh, I'm your host, Zycia, along with F- uh, Phoenix Nova, Day Drink ATL, and Mir. Welcome. What's up, fam? I'm going to pretend like the last four minutes just didn't happen. <laughs> what happened in the All last right. four minutes? Exactly. We just got here. Why? Right? <clears throat> yeah. No, I mean, uh, how, how was everybody's Thanksgiving? Oh, how weird um, deja vu. Yeah, I feel like we've had this conversation before. Yeah. I mean, yeah. mine was great. It was quite interesting. <laughs> I had uh, my my sister in law, my brother in law, and their kid, my nephew, essentially, uh, in our house, and uh, it was crazy seeing my kid, who is almost three, and their kid, who's four, almost five, uh, have a conversation. Like I've never seen him do that before. So like, my nephew comes up to him and he's like, "Hey, do you want to watch Teletubbies?" And he's like, yeah, he's never even seen Teletubbies that I know. <laughs> and he's just like, yeah. And then my nephew's just like, all right, let's go. And they just marched <laughs> off and to the den. <laughs> I yeah. honestly am shocked that Teletubbies still exists, but I'm glad. That I, I don't, don't, be sure. I don't know that it's like humanity. new or like. Yeah, it's probably just reruns on YouTube. Or yeah, something. I think I think that's what it is. Like it's it's like the way Mr. Rogers exists, which Mr. Rogers should which, always exist. Yeah. Let me be yeah. clear. Yeah. So what about you guys? What about you, Brian? What'd you do? A small, uh, small Thanksgiving with me and my partner, and uh, only it only got a single turkey breast instead of a whole turkey since there's just two of us, and we still have leftovers. Uh, I feel you. What, one yeah. of the things that I did um, is I was making the mac and cheese. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's box mac and cheese, but it's the one with like the, the, the creamy cheese instead of the powdered cheese. Right. Oh yeah. That's the only way to do it. Yeah. Well, it, yeah. If you're going to do box, that's the only way to do it really. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I took it and I made it up. And as soon as I made it up, she looks over at me and I'm scoop, I'm leaking a spatula and I'm putting it into the, the basket for the air fryer. And she goes, you're air frying the mac and cheese because I, cause I put it there and then I put, uh, 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 some thick grated cheddar over the top of it oh. and some panko breadcrumbs. Right. And I looked at her and I said, yes, I'm oh, air frying the mac and cheese because it's exactly what you asked me last year. And once as actually specifically what you said last year was like, what are you doing with the mac and cheese? And then as soon as it was done, she goes, Oh, that's really amazing. Same thing this year. It was pretty So awesome. is that Risky like after topping. you've made it? Yeah. After oh. you made it. Okay. After then you put it in your fryer to made. get the cheese. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh. And it's all done. Yeah. You, you, you get, and then it comes out with this bubbly cheddar because you put extra cheddar on the top, right? Bubbly cheddar. Sometimes depending on how long you air fry, the ch- cheddar starts to get that little bit of char on it. And then the panko bread comes, you know, a brown and crisp up and it's sweet. I know like it really tomorrow. takes your basic box Mac and cheese to the next level. That's for sure. Oh, that's already here at first folks. Mm, nummy, nummy. Now yep. I'm going to leave the podcast. What about you, Bruno? And and hopefully and next year she'll remember and she'll be uh, more excited. Now nah, we'll have the same it. conversation. Yeah. We for yeah. the first time had the, <laughs> had the quiet, just the two of us. Well, the two of us and then three dogs and a cat Thanksgiving. Um, the Canadian like, American. I know that Canada has their own. You have your own Thanksgiving, yeah, Canadians but Canadians don't really care that much about Thanksgiving. Like it's oh. not like the whole okay. fanfare that exists. I, it was almost. I, I was actually talking about this. I don't remember with who last week or something. But it was the only thing in in my entire time coming to the states that gave me any culture shock. Was like honestly my first time coming. To the United States, I was visiting for Thanksgiving, and we went to her her aunt's house, which was a, a rather large, like a state, and there was not a plantation, right? No, it, there was so <laughs> ma- it was in the north, so that that wasn't a thing. It was just <laughs> so many people, and like there was so much to it, so much food, so much everything. It was like this this whole huge massively orchestrated thing and i was like this is like the same thing right the whole like pilgrims and and, and shit and like yeah and i'm like <laughs> right 
Right. Uh, oh, okay. And I was like, you guys have like 30 plus dishes that you've cooked. And there's mm-hmm. like 50 people. Why? Yep. Why? They're like, yeah, everybody's flying in. Like, it's a big deal. And I'm like, what? And they're like, and then tomorrow we'll meet up again. And I'm like, <laughs> oh. Okay, I see why I was told to come here for five days, I guess. Like, it was, it was just very wild. Well, yeah, you're going to nap the other three days. Mm-hmm. I was I was like, damn. Oh, uh, I, did, I did not realize. I guess I just assumed that being a month, like, before our Thanksgiving, the Canadian Thanksgiving was, like, similar. It's, like, it's, it's my mom's favorite holiday. And she loves it because, like, th- there's, there are no gifts involved. Everybody comes just to see each other and to be with each other. And, and I'm like, thanks. and and where are the costumes? That that's the only thing that throws me off. So yeah, I, mean, I don't know. Like, like, like in Canada, it's like <laughs> it, it, it's the month earlier, and mm-hmm. like it's pretty much your most immediate family, if that. Granted, my okay. parents are never too big on holidays, but even my friends would have Thanksgiving, and they'd be like, you know, many generation. Canucks and they just be like, yeah, no, I just it was just me and my parents and that was it. And I'm like, your aunt, uncle, no, no, they didn't, they didn't come. They like, you know, they'd live like 30 minutes away and they wouldn't show up. They would just do their own thing at home. Wow. Um, this yeah, year we decided to different. throw everything out the window and we didn't even make turkey in any capacity. Dude, we... oh, I don't know why we celebrate with poultry. End of story. Like, I'm sorry, turkey. Take it, leave it. I could actually so... more leave it than take it. Let's so be you'll have to come to my house for Thanksgiving next year then. Because oh. I'm also like you very much not a turkey fan. Yes. But yes. there's been now a recipe in my family that I now make for turkey. And it is the best fucking turkey you'll ever taste. I mean, my mom's smoked turkey's fucking amazing. It's not smoked. But nope. Yeah. I, it's yeah. it's full of garlic and it's fucking amazing. Okay. I, sounds good. The best turkey I had was actually at my sister's house around Christmas time, like three years back, and it was deep fried. Which deep, I always we, said, like, oh, that's like, what we did this year. Fried. And like my brother in law, the Canuck that he is, I mean, I guess that's a really Canuck thing to do. He had that thing down going. He like he knew exactly <laughs> what it was doing. It didn't even take him long. I can see all these videos of people being like super careful. And he's like, no, nah, I've done that. It's cool. Like sh- sh- done. Boom, it's good. Done. Cooking. Yeah, so Fried. we made lasagna. A bunch of Ooh. Sides, so. lasagna. I like lasagna. that. Nice. Oh, that's great. It was great. Like we had lasagna well, for a couple of days. <clears throat> but yeah. Well, uh obviously Thanksgiving is now a thing of the past, and now we're moving towards the holidays for Chris Mahana Kwanzaa, uh, whichever you guys decide to uh, decide, if any. Chris Mahana Kwanzaa. I like that. It's good. Yeah, Chris Mahana Kwanzaa. I What's the right. the Seinfeld one? <clears throat> What's it? Festivus. Uh, Festivus, Festivus for the rest of us. Yeah. Thank you. That's what yeah. I celebrate. So and um, Christmas. But because of SAS fashion, we want to celebrate with you as well. So um, starting on December 5th, which is a Monday after the video that you now are watching, uh, we're going to have a giveaway starting in the Discord. So you have to be a member of our Discord to enter. Um, but on the 5th, there will be a message posted to Sassy Place, which is our general chat, essentially. And uh, all you have to do is click the button, say, I want to participate. And the winner will receive a free Sass shirt uh, based on whatever design you'd like to have. Well, within reason. Uh, but yeah, so all you have to do is enter uh, and the winner will be randomly selected um, via the, the bot the on Discord December 25th. Bot. So whether you celebrate Christmas or not, it'll be December 25th. It'll be released and we'll see who the winner is. And so, Merry Festivus to you. Yeah. If you win. <laughs> so that's that's a little bit of us. We're looking at some different things. Like Obviously, we're trying to incorporate you, the listener, you, the viewer, uh, with some of the stuff we're doing. And and obviously, you know, spreading some of our joy to you would be also awesome. And plus, who doesn't like to win? Like free stuff. Like I love free stuff. It could be like, I love free stuff. I mean, it's like when I you especially go to the love a free shirt. Especially when it's a good shirt. Like, yeah. where we get our shirts from, yeah, they're have, like, high quality shirts. You can so. have like this one or another one or whatever. But I mean, like, huge, like I go to the arcade, like when I was a kid, like I get all these little, t- little tickets and you trade them in, you get like a little finger trap. But it was free. I was pumped. Like, it's, <laughs> you know, free, free. for me. Uh, I 
sort of. I, I, I steer clear of a lot of free stuff, but when it's good free stuff, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm in Lake Flynn. Yeah. So, but yeah, so check us out. If you're not a Discord member, go ahead and join. Uh, our love information is everywhere. Uh, where you can our information at, will be in the show notes of the this episode that you are listening to in yep. all of the episodes in the past and moving forward. So check it out. Here we go. Uh, yeah, so that's that. Um, we may have some other um, streaming things that may have happened uh, by the end of the end of the month or maybe extra some videos. I'm not sure exactly, but we'll see. Uh, but yeah, we'll let you guys know. So just make sure to follow our socials and we'll, uh, we'll let you know. All right. Well, um, moving into the topic of the day, which is interesting because it's going to relate to some of our, what we've been playing this past week, uh, which would kind of like a call back to a couple of weeks ago when I mentioned this before. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'll let, I'll let you Phoenix, uh, take it away. Uh, yeah. Uh, Sony, uh, just announced really uh, a new product called Mokapi. Mokapi. Uh, and Mokapi is interesting because uh, it's um, targeted towards VTubers right now. It is buffering. It is. Uh, it's. So we, all, we, all, we all buffer every once yeah, in a while. It's body it's tracking okay. with these six little lightweight little sen- motion sensors. Those are really small. Yeah, they're really small. And they hook up to your cell phone. And then your cell phone talks to your PC uh, for various things. Now, most of what Sony is doing this for is more of VTuber type video production as opposed to real time as much. Uh, So it it will track your movements and everything. Uh, And some of what it's doing when it's tracking its movements, uh, it's, it's recording it. And then later you can overlay uh, an avatar essentially. Uh, It's pretty, pretty cool. It's pretty interesting watching it in action. Uh, And it's definitely something that uh, if it can be tracked real time as well because i mean it is kind of tracking real time yeah close enough yeah um that it would be nice if it's able to be able to do it real time for vtubers for uh things like uh different metaverses uh i mean what well i was gonna say one of the things that i'm looking at it as (laughs) as someone who like follows a lot of game developers like this could be something they could use for almost like their 3D tracking for animation for inside the game, which, like you said, is, yes. is kind of what they're, I guess, gearing it for, not necessarily for VTubers. But yeah, but yeah, that's like, a, I don't know what the price is, but yeah. it seems well, like it'd be a, a cheaper price point than like having to get a studio with like full body, uh, full body tracking. Yeah, because uh, right now, no. no. Only <laughs> in Japan. Uh, oh, yes. currently. So you have to fly to Japan. I mean, it's still a little cheaper than renting yeah. out it. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, when it comes out, uh, I think it's yeah. supposed to be like um, early, really like January, February uh, 2023 is what's supposed to be coming out for about three hundred and sixtieth dollars. Yeah. Uh, Forty nine thousand yen, I think is what they said. Um, and they yeah, they, they also said, you know, it could be used for, you know, kind of indie movie or game, you know, development. Yeah. Now, interestingly enough, mm-hmm. almost at the same time. Okay. Uh, VR chat has been talking up some stuff because they just released some updates to OSC tracking. Now this is live real time body tracking and it does it through OSC. Now, interesting OSC should be something that Zeissy is interested in because it's Mm -hmm. open sound control. And it was originally developed for linking multimedia sound devices uh, through an OSC server. Uh, And, and, but the neat thing is, is that VR chat who has supported uh, this in the past there, they just talked about some real big updates that they're doing in releases coming up here. Uh, 2023, they're going to offer support for receiving tracker data, 
over OSC for use with our existing calibrated full body IK systems. They already have a full body kind of tracking system, but now they're going to be adding OSC in it. So some of the people are thinking that maybe the Sony can be kind of coupled in with uh, this OSC tracking as well. Now, Sony's currently has a lower bar of entry because you hook it up to your cell and then your cell syncs with your VR helmet or other things or you overlay it. So a lot easier. OSC, you have to, you know, install the OSC software and OSC server. And, you know, there's a little bit more overhead there. Um, it's a good yeah, jumping. I mean, if they're starting though. it, the technology will be there and the other people will start doing yeah. the same thing and right. hopefully be competitive and the price points will be pretty decent. So Brian, yeah. this looks, it looks like it's, it, so I've, I've had an Xbox connect. I've had a Wii. I've had the Wii, uh, with the, what's the pad that I, I used to do? Yeah, the, balance, the, the balance the, pad. The balance, balance, board. balance board. Um, it, this actually looks like it might be more accurate because there are more yes. points mm-hmm. for, whatever it you're adjusting to to act it, it looks more like so there so, was a game on connect that i used to play fighting zombies cannot remember i'll find it but i remember being like what what and i'm like i got that guy and it was like it, it wouldn't register so tell me so more the about that accuracy this. interesting you say this this is uh, I believe uh, Hari Tora X and this is 10 months ago and this is OSC body tracking. They have ankle knee waist and then the hands are being tracked by the quest Two controllers. Oh, and this is real time. This is like a combo. Oh, hello. And this is, it's stuff like this that they've been doing because it immerses you more in the VR because your legs actually do something. Yeah. Yeah. You know, instead of just your upper body moving, uh, you know, there's some early VR stuff, which is hilarious of like what happens when like you take off the headset and put it down the ground and your avatar freaks out. (laughs) Uh, And this is 10 months ago. Uh, I would like to point out that these, this is extremely bulky. This is a box that big strapped to your chest. Okay. The Sony being much smaller, but again, that's 10 months ago. Mm -hmm. Then you have stuff like, uh, I don't know why they called it this, (laughs) but you have slime VR and this is relatively VR. And interestingly enough, it looks very similar (gasps) to the Sony ones because they're little slimes like from, um, the, uh, uh, the dragon, dragon help me out here. Dragon. so that's dragon actually quest? really cool dragon i know they had to plan Travel that out lines? to have a chair but that is that is super yeah cool. <laughs> yeah sitting down the chair exactly it, it builds the immersion when you can do that so uh, slime vr is uh available i think it's uh her panties were showing uh well i mean yeah <laughs> So you can get a core set five plus one and the plus one is your torso tracker. uh, And you get that for $190 right now. And this this is an OSC tracker as well. So you still need that OSC server. Yeah. Climbing up, like standing on the chair. I mean, that's just. Wow. Yep. That's just. I am going to be running into walls in no time. Exactly. (laughs) These are all essentially like advanced versions of what everybody used to use, which was the HTC Vive trackers. Because if you remember, HTC Vive used to have the additional trackers. They're like those weird little three pronged things with the band. They still do. They still do. Yeah, I think they've released new versions, but Vive kind of sucks at VR for the most part Mm. now in comparison to these other companies. And I think one of the main differences is is the, the Vive needs the silos. Yep. for those trackers because it's triangulating to them. Uh, Whereas the these trackers right, are a bit like different. The mm. These trackers are a bit different that the only thing they're tracking is motion. Hmm. So, I, um, yeah. so you have to calibrate them for the motion to begin with. And, and just like any kind of motion thing that could go off a little bit. 
yeah, slightly off topic and mostly just to throw shade, but I actually have the HTC Vive and have since ceased using it specifically because their lighthouses or styles, whatever you want to call them, suck. They're like yeah. the worst technical product on the planet. They cost like $180 a piece minimum, essentially, and they break constantly. And Vive has some of the worst support period ever in the entirety of existence. So in order to get any replacements, you pretty much have to like go to war with them just for them to take it back and then be like, oh, sorry, we can't offer you anything back for this. We're just going to send you back the broken unit. And then you have to go send you back the broken piece of crap. The last time send it. I decided to get back into um, (sighs) into VR. I still had my Vive and both my lighthouses broke. At the same time, they stopped working. The infrared sensors on the bottom failed on both of them because it's the main point of failure. And I was like, I don't want to have to try and fix these myself. I tried to work with Vive. They refused. So I was like, I'm done with this entire platform. Screw it. Because for the price that it would cost to buy two new lighthouses, which was about 400 USD, I could buy a Quest, a Quest 2. So I I bought a Quest 2. And then I bought a Quest 2 for Savannah. We literally just bought two Quest 2s. And those things have been more reliable than the Vive ever was. And then you bought a Quest 2 for your friend Kelly. And Mike. I wish I had a cricket sound effect right now. <laughs> Maybe we can put well, that post production. <laughs> so, oh, wait, wait, did I Bruno. Break? Bruno, did I break he's Bruno? looking for our quests. Oh, no, he's, he's got them. Guy. He's going to pop up and he's be like, here, here they are, guys. Yeah, that's right there. I, yeah, and it fit them to your head it's already. Actually, My- it's actually funny because. Um, I mean, whoever's listening can't smaller. see this, but this this Quest Two <laughs> is actually modified to use the Vive Deluxe Audio Strap, which, funny enough, is the only good thing that Vive has ever created. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's interesting to see the evolution in the little bit of time that we've done. You know, the the VR slash now Metaverse is what we're moving towards, because like you have the movies ever since you know. I don't know how old, how long ago it would be like 60s or 70s have movies that are like futuristic and ideas of VR and stuff. But like, yeah, like to now, was, well, I'll say like to okay. now having like Ready Player One, right? Like Ready Player One's probably the most advanced sense of movie that's come out that's like a metaverse kind of an idea mm-hmm. and seeing the evolution of that because like the vibe was it. Like, I that was it. Ready mm-hmm. Player One and raise mm-hmm. you a Star Trek holodeck, sir. Yeah. <laughs> right. I mean, that's what I'm saying. Like, it's there's it's like it's it's always been a, a version of something in the past of like how we you know predict the future going to be. I'm really excited but like the Vive was the initial one. Like it was the one yeah. that everybody had. It was the only one you had and you tried it. And, and like you said, I don't know if the lighthouse is the same thing. It's like a little sensor Oculus, box. You can like mount it on the wall. Came or, out first. That's it. I guess. Um, yeah, I don't remember if it was Oculus first, first or not. I think the first but... Oculus did hit first, and then the yeah. Vive came, or the, yeah, the, yeah. the, Vive the first one like, that made sense. That did make sense, yeah. For the first yeah. Oculus, like Oculus One came out first, yeah, yeah, and then and then that the makes Facebook sense, yeah. purchase happened, the right? Vive came and out just before the Facebook yeah, purchase, pre Facebook. Yeah, it was pre mm. pre Meta, and now obviously, because yeah. that was a big thing too. Is yeah. like and then, when and the then, Oculus came out, it was like owned by Facebook, and they're like, oh, you have to have an account for Facebook to use it, and everybody's like, ah, get on that. And then now they remove that restriction. I'm going to make the metaverse. And then he laid off like tens of thousands of people being like, whoopsie, (laughs) my bad. Mm -hmm. Also, also, he's like, oh, metaverse. Nobody jumped on that. Meta removed the restriction that you had to have a Facebook account. Yeah, because they own the whole account that you're going to make it under anyway. And they can still gather whatever they need to. It's the same thing. Yeah. Yep. But I'm really excited to see where Sony goes with this because the PSVR headset was actually pretty underrated all in all for what it did. Like it it was a pretty solid system considering it was like their first iteration and it's not their main gambit. Um, So I'm curious to see how PSVR two is and how this mo copy thing ends up ends up hitting Um, $360 is like honestly not a high price point considering like the Vive trackers are like 300 a piece or something. Well, mm. the biggest thing to think about with the Vive versus like the Quest is the Vive, you have to have a PC. You have to have a physical machine that can run the VR headset and everything well, else. Whereas the Quest literally just runs on the Quest. So. Well, for this, we're talking about like Sony, right? So you still have to have a PS5 <laughs> for PSVR 2. So that's, yeah, well, not that. PSVR 2, yeah. Well, I'll say the videos weren't what they were using McCopy. Wasn't that with... No, uh, well, he, he's just saying PSVR 2. I mean, yeah, Mo-Copy, PSVR 2 oh, plus yeah. Mo-Copy, Mocopy is probably going to be... You know, 
it connects to your phone and then connects to your sure. PC. And, yeah. And that's a and good it, point it to make because it does yeah. like even the slime you were showing is they were using a quest as like the, yeah. the, the major tracking portion. So you're still going to need that device, but the addition to help well, you know, make your character move a little better is, you know. I mean, you don't have to. That's the thing. No. Yeah, that's true. Because you could, uh, you play VR. Well, I mean, we'll talk more about VR chat, but I mean, you could play a lot of these with flat screen. It's still, yeah, I guess you could. Motions. You're just still tracking. Uh, motion, honestly, yeah. I, I could see true. a lot of, a lot of like, it seems like a really cheap, um, a really cheap VTuber option because mm-hmm. like VTubers don't need, like, I know that it's like not the perfect real time, like movie level, like rendering, but it's fidelity yeah. doesn't have to be like super great. For like a VTuber, like on Twitch. Yeah, like, if you're thinking about like good enough, it's what where, like, they could I'm seeing of lag. the VTuber. You know, yeah. like that's that's the most important part. So, you're well, you're and, doing it for your audience, and it gives them freedom because you know normally VTuber, you know, because of the limitations, they're just sitting there. Mm-hmm. But now the VTuber can be like, oh, we got it. Uh, we we got. 50 subs today. So now I'm going to go dance on the dance pad and, and they accidentally different- knock over the coffee mug on my desk. <laughs> All yeah, I know is only fans is about to get a whole lot wilder. <laughs> All I know uh, is that now we don't have to worry about uh, uh, wardrobe malfunctions on stream because if you get up we and you get come to back see and, them your, and your boobs hanging out, like, it's not going to matter because you're in VR except for when they forget to turn on the VTuber overlay. And I mean, oh. you know, not saying that's ever happened. Like a, a famous VTuber comes it's back never. or just a famous streamer comes back and her boobs hanging out. Like that's not, that didn't happen that at all. Happen. That didn't happen. In, uh, I mean, so. it would never happen. That's what it meant. Yeah. It didn't. Or, never. you know, the other one where you're just getting railed on camera, but that's a whole different conversation, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Jesus. Yeah. Christ. <clears throat> Oh, yeah, that's and, cool. And still there. Um, and still there. So, yeah. Yeah, and still there. Exactly. Why get banned? Why you get banned? No, you um, actually, Elon Musk should buy Twitch next. Yeah. Just buy Amazon. Just do that. And then I mean, that really, really would have been a better investment. Why didn't he buy Twitch? <laughs> He's too broke Seriously. For that. He didn't get far down enough in the, the Rolodex. He saw Twit and was like, okay. Mm-hmm. So, I've, 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 I've made that accidental keyboard enter yeah yes yeah, it's happened there too unfortunate. Yeah. well cool that was uh pretty enlightening i didn't realize we had some newer technology like that kind of being mm-hmm. uh, newer and also smaller and more well i won't say affordable yet because we won't even be able to reach the, receive these in the u.s yet but i'm sure through ebay and other things like that people will well, lower barrier of, barrier of technical entry as well yeah for sure because that's the thing i mean Three hundred forty nine dollars, like even for sale, I think on the Black Friday sale for for Amazon, they were giving away the quest for three forty nine. But it's like that's still a oh, pretty good. We'll get price into point. that. <laughs> but you didn't have good... to have a server too. You still have to have a server for this, right? No, it's well, you just this, have the device. The, o- the OCP, OCP. <laughs> that's Robocop. <laughs> 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 the OSC server is for what uh, the other like slime VR and a couple other things. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Get to get those uh, trackers into different things like VR chat. The, the lower technical barrier with Sony is that it, they all sync okay. with the cell phone and then the cell phone talks the to the cell phone yeah. or something yeah. else like that. So, so you have so to have a easier. cell phone. Yeah. You have, yeah, yeah. You have to have a okay. cell phone, but that's not a big with deal. With enough Japan, space on sure. it. Yeah. Yeah. All the quest Two. the quest Two is its own thing. Like you can literally just buy that and use, and, and that's why a lot of people are using that for yeah. VR because it is a self box thing out of the box. You can start playing. That works really um, whereas great the too. Vive, you have to have a PC, you have to have all the stuff. It's more expensive. You it's know, also like the only headset I've worn that has like way better spatial awareness because when you get too close to something, it immediately phases the game out and you can see what you're about to hit, which <laughs> the Vive did oh, not weird. do. So there were many times where I was just like, Oh, there's something there. Wow. That's so that's yeah. how they they change the because like with the vibe, there was motion sensors around you. It kind of builds the box. And if you get closer to the box, it shows you like the wall. <clears throat> so you're saying like, the like lines out there. But if you get yeah. close to something, it will like turn grayscale and you'll see like the room, the actual room around you. So it's That's actually amazing. transparent. It's just showing you. Yeah. 
Well, oh, we saw that one day. Okay. You joined and you had your better. camera on, and your camera was recording. You're like, "Where's this camera coming from?" And it was your VR that was headset. The vibe, actually, yeah, it was like on the front though. Yeah. It was like something you wouldn't even have thought like would have been. <laughs> yeah, I didn't even recording. know it was there. I, I thought it was just like an infrared sensor, and I was like, "There's a camera there," but they didn't really use it for much, which was really confusing. Right, they're just filming your house, no problem. Yes, yeah, so that's exactly what it was. <laughs> Selling it to Russia, or <laughs> yeah, whatever. Anyway, uh, give us a few minutes. We're going to come back from our break and actually talk a little bit more about VR chat since uh, that is something that we did over the past week and a half. So stay tuned. Uh, be right back. And we're back. There's no. Ch- you look like you're choking yourself when you do that. I am choking myself. Weird. I hate you're myself. Right. There's sometimes. no. Ch- is that so like a, is it David Carradine that died? Is that like a Mandela effect thing? Because I I could have sworn there was a ch and now there's no ch. No, it, the ch is on the very first one. It's, it's on the oh, opening okay, opening okay. sound. But oh, that was Mandela I, I always, effect. I, I, I always thought it was there too. At it just because it it's like a nice like ease in. Damn it, CERN! <laughs> so as we talk in the first half about VR. Uh, capabilities and different actual hardware. Uh, we're going to talk about VR chat because we're going to talk about some of the games we've been playing recently. So cue the music. I like that one. I want it to so, be longer though. That's, so what, that's what she said. I rounded, <laughs> I was able to round two of the four or three of the four or well, two other than me, three. Um, of our group to actually get on VR chat uh, last weekend, weekend before or something like that. Oh. And I, I had experienced it once before, like a month or so before that. Um, and I just thought word. it was pretty neat. It's a good word. What's experienced that? it. Experience. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's mm-hmm. an experience. Mm-hmm. It's definitely, it is. it's, you know, everybody talked about the metaverse and Facebook and all the meta and all that stuff. And that's like garbage. Like none of that is real. <laughs> like it's just not good. Um, now, VR chat has been around for a long time, and there's other ones like that. There's Rec Room. There's there's a few others that you know have the same idea that you join as an avatar. And you I don't know. Explore. Second Life for like Second Life mm-hmm. forever. 15 years. <laughs> but uh, but VR chat is obviously more popular, I would say, um, amongst new people that are getting quests and things like that. And it's on Steam. It's free to play. They have a uh, well, they say they're trying to do monitoring for like sexual harassment and other things. I mean, don't get me wrong. There, I'm sure there are things in place, but it's it's really hard. Like, there's so many different instances, so many different worlds, so many different everything. So, like, how how are you going to try to monitor that? Like, it's just I don't know. It seems kind of impossible. But I mean, again, not. shouldn't have your kids playing, right? Definitely, definitely don't have your kids playing. Not not unsupervised, at least. Yeah. As he as he raises his glass. Yeah, I mean, if like if that's your thing, if you're Not a parent and you want them to experience that and that's your call, then fine. Just yeah. just know that it's not rated, right? Like the online experience is never rated because you just don't know who you're going to run into. Like you just have no yeah. idea. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so anyway, disclaimer on that, like that's VR chat, right? But no, actually, uh, so if it, the one thing that a lot of people don't realize is you can do VR chat without a VR headset. Uh, which is what all three of us did. Like we actually just used our computer screen and we joined, we used a controller or a keyboard and mouse to navigate. Uh, And it's quite funny because like people that are in that experience with you, like they call you out. They're like, Oh, you must be like a a keyboarder because like you're not moving like the same way. Calling us out, but I mean they did mention it. (laughs) Yeah. Although I do find it funny that they very much used the term that we had talked about where kids were doing on the playground after Fortnite, and they literally, you were like, "Oh, how'd you know?" And she goes, "Well, because you're so basic. Yeah, you're so default. Default. I'm so default. default. Because we we weren't moving our arms and stuff. They were like." And One guy was like, hey, just get a quest. It's like 300 bucks. I'm like, oh, oh, are you just going to give me $300? Like, I don't have to pay yeah. for like uniforms for my kids and shit. Like, yeah. <laughs> OK, <laughs> it's only $300. Oh, my bad. Let me. But I, mean, I will you know, also say working and, you know, <laughs> we did get a little a little little bird on the podcast told us, oh, well, like if Right now on Amazon, it's like a Black Friday deal, like early Black Friday, like just get a quest for 350 bucks. And several of us were like, 
uh, After it's a couple still of in drinks. my cart. Yeah, it's still in my cart too. It's totally still in my cart too. I, I, I never just put saved it, it for in my later. cart. Uh, you I'm did like, delete it from your cart? Oh, God. No, I never I put, put it, it in my cart. cart and it already got here. It's been here yeah. for like a year or so. Yeah, 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 yeah I saved yeah. mine for later. You I weren't even there. Spend, I don't want to spend do, $349. Yeah, right. I got mine Christmas. when it was still $300 when it wasn't on I know. sale. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, I didn't want to spend that kind of money right now with like Christmas coming up and a lot of other mm. things. We had trips planned and stuff. But that would have been a very tipsy, a tipsy. I yeah, that would have been it, the most it, expensive I, drunken I, purchase. For I want to say, yeah. Brian, what did you say to us the next morning? Well, uh, OK, so what well, two things at the time I said, I might regret telling you this <laughs> yes. because it could be a drunk purchase. Mm hmm. And then the next morning I put in chat, I said, now that everybody's be getting over your <laughs> your hangovers, be honest, who purchased a quest, <laughs> who, dr who drunk purchased a quest? Yeah, I was yeah, no this did. close. Hangovers. This is how well you know us. I was literally this close. I almost, almost did it. Oh, well, especially since it wasn't just the Quest Two for mm. three forty nine. It was the Quest yeah. Two plus Beat Saber, which arguably is one of the best of the early games, uh, if not still one of the best games. I would, I would argue Quest. that it's just. It, in general, one of the best VR games yeah. still. Yeah, amazing. exactly. It's it's so well designed. It's so immersive. It's so like just responsive. It's uh, uh, and then I think. Go ahead. It's a game that you can like you can pick, like I could grab my headset right now, throw it on and I could just play for 10 minutes and put it down. And it, there's like you know, that's like two or three songs. It's it's also a game that you could easily slap on someone else's head. Yep. And they could pick it up and get, they may not be great at it, but they could pick it up and get the gist of it fairly quickly. Yeah. Uh, but I think the other game that came with that 350 deal was, I was it Resident, Resident Evil. Evil seven. Yeah. Or four um, or something, something weird. seven, most likely seven. Yeah. Seven was the one that Three, was made into VR. Two, original yeah. Resident Evil seven VR. So Eight, but that's not 12? why we joined VR chat. We weren't here to like, talk to resident evil or beat saber we actually played vr chat to experience the the experience right so uh, i was looking we, for the rave i was looking for the rave and, and so i saw a video uh one of our discord members had posted uh, a couple weeks back and uh he's actually a big avid vr chat user and um and has been featured in many like videos online of youtube videos of like vr chat uh people um but the video he posted was talking about like the underground of like DJs and the VR scene, because mm -hmm. like, and I think I may have mentioned this before, but ultimately the long story short is, you know, you have a, a DJ that is trying to test a set and what's not the best way to do that than sitting in your house, set everything up and then be a DJ in a live VR instance where like you can literally see if people are dancing or not. And if they're not happy, then you're like, well, this sucks. I should probably move on. Yeah. And you don't physically have to go to a venue to play like you can test everything out. Uh, and the other side of that was like some artists are actually using that as their way to get exposure because like, you know, there's only so many clubs in your area. There's only so many DJs that can play per night. So like everything's kind of booked. And especially if you're a new person, like trying to get into that scene, like it's much like a band, like you can't just like walk in and say, hey, I want to play. They're like, all right, who are you? Why? You know, mm -hmm. what credit do you have? Where do you play before? Uh, and you say like VR chat, like yours. <laughs> no. um, but no, it's a cool thing. So I've been I've been looking for that. I want to go to like an actual VR rave. So if you are listening or watching and you know of one, slap a comment down low. Let me know. I would like to visit at least once. So I put it in the chat. I would love to hear that. Do love the fact though that you that there were there were multiple groups of people uh, knowing that we're all default, and you mm -hmm. walk up, you were walking up to them like, hey, do, do you know where the rave is? Is there a portal of rave? And this girl opens up this portal for you and everybody just yeah. jumps in. Jumped we were, in. Well, hold on, hold on before that. Because I'm walking around, I'm asking and, and people are like, yeah, yeah, I think I've heard of that too. Not, you know, whatever. And then this one person was like, yes. And it just popped a portal. And the way they can do like, so you can pop a portal and you can basically invite other people to instances that you're friends of. There's like different permission levels. There's like friends only, friends of friends, only private, all these different things. Um, but like, she pops this portal and she's like, yeah, right through there. I got you. And we're like, 
I'm like, hell yeah. Like, that's exactly what I was looking for. Thank you. So we all jump in this portal along with other people that were listening to us talk, mm-hmm. like talk in the room. And totally then what happens? Literally jumped into basically a jail fucking cell. And we were all in a jail cell individually. Yeah. Like everyone had individually, their own jail yeah. cell. Well, we all woke up <laughs> yes. in individual sleep pods. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. And the first thing I hear is Zaisia going, is this what it's like to be roofied and wake up in the now? <laughs> I mean, it basically was. I mean, we were yeah, like, yeah, we were yeah. at this club having a good time. Person pops a portal. We jump through it. And all of a sudden now we're like in a jail cell. And it was Ooh, like, more, you more like an experimental clinic. <laughs> I mean, we, and we were the subjects. It was fun. I mean, it wasn't bad. It, it was definitely like it was crazy. It was like a maze. We met other people, but I was already fucking exhausted. I was yeah. like, guys, I'm going to boom, boom, my way out of yeah. this. Like, well, well, that was the other thing, too, is there was other people sick. doing the same thing. Yeah. Like, we were all kind of like WTF and we're going through each tunnel, like each hallway. And like, it's just more mm. rooms. And then we found a staircase and we went down the staircase and I ran into like this you large didn't go up the uh, staircase. The staircase goes up and then hits a level where it just goes to complete darkness. Oh, well, I went down, That's but I, I ran into That's a like teenage really mutant sad. ninja turtle it's interesting or something, scary up there. but like no shirt, like ripped, like oh, buff turtle dude. Wait, no, that no. And he was like, yeah. like, I'm looking for this guy. And I'm like, actually, I just saw that guy over here. <laughs> like, did you guys get that? And they're like, yeah, we're on this portal. That. So we're like going down these hallways. And I think this is about the time you two left. And I decided to carry on because I was like, I'm going to have to figure mm-hmm. this. I want to figure out what the hell we're doing here. Yeah. And, uh, so I continued on that night and went with these other guys that we just ran into. Uh, and we actually picked up another guy from somewhere in Europe. I couldn't even tell you where he's from, but somewhere. And he was like talking to us about like, like he was also fairly new, but we were all trying to like, we were almost playing this like an escape room. We were all trying to like figure out what to do next. Mm. And, uh, and then somebody that we ran into said, Hey, I have a, a place we could go. I will pop a portal. We can, we can jump there. And I was like, all right, cool. So we did that. And we ended up going to like an actual, it felt like a cool little neighborhood bar. So Aww. like we went there and like there was like a bunch of people from uh, I think like UK slash US um, like Eastern slash like early morning in the UK. Uh, and we're all just hanging out. There's like a dance floor. It's like really chill. There's like a, you know, uh, like a bar and there was like a casual area, almost like a restaurant or something. Um, but it was really neat. Like I talked to those people for a good minute. Turns out they were in it and he was telling me some different things and we were just trading stories and, and, uh, and the guy from the Europe was like telling us all these crazy things that he's experienced and, you know, and we were all kind of like, cool. So we all added each other and like, we'll hang out one day in the, in the future. Yeah. Um, I just nice. like watching the videos where people go in and troll people in VR chat. This is one well, guy on TikTok so who, I guess there's like poker <laughs> rooms that you can join in VR chat. You know I mean, you can join anything, right really. It's, it's crazy. And there's, there's this one dude who literally just joins random, like, gambling rooms. And he sits down at the table and he goes, oh, wait a minute. I'm sorry, guys. I didn't realize this, mo- r- this room was private. And they're like, it's not private. It's public. And he's like, no, no, no. no. Like, I, I get it. Yeah, it's like a private room. I didn't mean to come in here. That was my bad. But it was public. I can prove it. Then he asked somebody else. And he's like, when you came into this room, was it public or private? And the person's like, it was public. And he's like, see, it was public when I came in. I'm like, no, no. We know it's public. It's supposed to be public. It's like, no, no, no. You guys are confused. I get it. It's private. And he just messes with them. And they're like, dude, what is happening right now? This oh, is my a, God. This is, a totally pri- totally. this is not a private room. It's a public room. It's like, no, it's private. And he's like, wait, is it private? It's not supposed to be private. So like these really innocent trolls, and these people all get confused. And they're all like gambling. And then they stop. And they're like, can somebody check if this room is actually private or public? <laughs> I'm like, this is great. Yeah. <laughs> it's like I mean, jumping into random people's lobbies and messing with them. The other thing I remember was like we went to a bar and there was a bartender and we were like me and Day Drinker were talking to him and he starts telling us his life story about his his <laughs> girlfriend or whatever that yeah he thinks is cheating on him because she doesn't yeah. show up on the instance and I'm like oh my god whatever yeah he's like but but yeah but I got a girlfriend too I was like ah uh, well so it's uh, yeah that was like and then oh. I watched that TikTok no <laughs> yeah exactly yeah, exactly. <laughs> So anyway, VR chat's really cool. Uh, I would definitely like if you're interested in any capacity of this, just download it on Steam for free on your PC. You can play with your mouse and keyboard or a controller uh, with your monitor and experience it that way. It's it's a little I wouldn't say janky. It's just not, you know, 
it's not the best. Like there's there's control things that can be kind of difficult, but it's not crazy. Like I would Savannah tells me about it. She plays it. She says the boob physics are wild. They are the boob. <laughs> Off the chart. She's weird. apparently slapped a lot of boobies <laughs> in VR chat. All right. Well, uh, we'll, uh, well, put that down for science. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so other games I've been playing. Uh, the only other thing I've been really been playing uh, is I bought this during the autumn festival of Steam, which started like in December or not December. It's almost December. It now. was originally called the summer. Or it was autumn. It was called autumn. And we were like, it's like winter. Like, what are you thinking? Like it's whatever. No, I Either think- way, uh, I bought a game because it was on sale. I've been looking at this game for a while. I've, I'm into these types of games, and I saw it went on sale for like almost like half price, and I was like, I'll get it with the DLC, whatever. So I bought Oxygen, not included. And if you are a fan of management style games, in the sense of not building everything and having to assign workers to go build something. Um, whereas you're a management in the sense of like you set everything you want to be built, whatever you put out there and you can put priority on those things. And the people that are good at those type of actions will take place and go and take care of those things. Um, it's one of those games. And I've played a couple of these games before and these are, I, I like them because it's, it's almost like automation. You can like figure out how to automate things and, and go forward and stuff. But one of the cool things about Oxygen Not Included is literally in the name of the game is Oxygen is not included in the sense of the the, the ability to breathe because you're basically a, a crew that wrecked into an asteroid and you only have like three people when you start the game uh, in a portal that other people can show up on. It's all you have and you have to dig. And then once you start digging, you get resources to build tiles and you can start building rooms And the whole thing is there is gas, different types of gases. So oxygen, meaning what you need to breathe. uh, But there's also carbon uh, carbon dioxide, which every time their their characters are breathing, which are called (laughs) duplicates, by the way, which is hilarious. Um, But every time they breathe, they exhale. So that's and they basically do two to one. So like they exhale more carbon dioxide than they're inhaling oxygen. So it's like oxygen it's starting to go down and you have way more carbon dioxide. So, but as you start building these rooms, it's not only that part of it, it's also it's layered because of the way gases work. So heavier gases sink to the bottom where lighter gases float to the top. So you have all your oxygen somewhere in the middle, your carbon dioxide is more at the bottom and you have all your like, you know, hydrogen and all these other things floating to the top. So depending on how you build your rooms, it can kind of get difficult because you're trying to obviously go through your tech tree and try to get better things. But at the same time, you're also trying to monitor how much water and how much that's another thing, water, like trying to figure that out. Uh, But water and oxygen and having, you know, ventilation and trying to figure out all these things um, because the end game is basically getting to the surface, which I've yet to do. And I'm still pissed about it uh, to be able to build a rocket. And then you can apparently go explore space and find other colonies like, or, go build other colonies on different planets, asteroids. So I'm like, that's super cool. But I'm like, I've, I, I, the playthrough I'm on now, I'm almost to hundred days, hundred phases. And I've got about seven people and that's it. Like I've, I've done a different, different kind of attempts. And, and this has been the best playthrough so far. Plus me knowing the game now a little bit better. And even with that, like I'm only probably like one fourth of the tech tree, like overall. And there's like so much and like I haven't even gotten to the automation. I haven't even gotten to that part yet because I can't I don't even have enough resources to do that. Like my main battle right now is I'm starting to run out of oxygen because I'm running out of power and I don't have enough coal to power my generators or a hydrogen. It's like a chicken or egg scenario. Yeah. So the hydrogen power generators are like the cleanest. They only they don't expel anything. So they just work. But you have to include you have to give it uh, hydrogen. Well, in order to make hydrogen, you have another thing that produces oxygen and hydrogen. So hydrogen goes to the top. Well, you have to have a gas collector there sucking in all the hydrogen and filtering out hydrogen versus oxygen to give it back to the power. Well, if you don't have enough power, it can't suck the helium or the hydrogen out of the air to give it to the power thing. So it's like. I've got the chicken or the egg scenario. It's like, well, it needs power, but I can't get power because these up here don't have power to suck in the air. And it's like these people. So I have to failed science class. 
Yeah, so I have to <laughs> think about different options like using well, coal, but I'm running out of coal. I have to think about like maybe using manual generators, but that causes my duplicates to have to work. And it's, you know, it's yeah. a it's a whole thing. But I will say out of these types of games, probably one of my favorites so far. And I've already played like 41 hours, I think it said. Uh, I mean, I'll lie. It's like 14. Hopefully it's 14. If it's 41. I'm crazy. Uh, 42 hours, 0.7. Uh, and I just bought this like last week or something. So uh, it's been a lot of fun. I've really enjoyed it. Can't wait to keep playing it. I was playing it before we started the podcast tonight and uh, excited to go see where that goes next. Yeah. yeah so to that you... developer clay entertainment, um, they make really, really yeah. awesome games. They are the yeah. creators of don't starve slash don't yep. starve together. Uh... Which is still one of my favorite survival games of all time. And of one of my favorite card games called Grifflands. Yeah, so yep. you apparently missed the joke when I had put it in there. They said Steam Summer Sale. Yeah. Oh, I didn't see but that. It was the Autumn yeah, I put Sale. It in sassy yeah. That's, that's why I put oh, it there. I was yeah. like, I said Steam oh, is obviously see, confused. I skipped over the top part of that. I just saw Autumn Sale, and that's why I was still like, it's confused because Autumn, I'm like, it's already December. No, like, no, what are you yeah. talking about? Autumn, I, I thought that Autumn was doesn't hysterical. end until December 22nd. Yeah. yeah. That's when winter starts. That's starts. wild. Uh, aut- aut- most people don't but, realize that autumn. Yeah, my my it's whole sense the, of theme is summer sale. Yeah. in autumn. Yeah, that's Hello. that's that that was a nice little typo, I guess, that they did. Yeah. Cool. So Kelly, what you got? You uh, so I I started Pentiment, uh, which I am actually really enjoying so far. It's a sort of a choose your own adventure, which I always like. It the graphics are really cool. They're like super old like 1700s style and like wood uh, engraving yes like think of like the oldest bible that has beautiful pictures and there are animations that happen within the the story itself so you'll be talking to this nun and she is like being part of this character in like doing the, a pose that the character on the page is doing and you, then you do this. And so you learn a lot about history. It's actually very cool. Is it and based on history? E, e, uh, the story itself. Well, I mean, but no, like the stuff in it, the history that's inside yes, the game is actually. Yes, history. absolutely. Yeah, 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 yeah. Cool. yeah. So um, I was, my character was talking to somebody and then they found out that it's all writing. It's all like calligraphy in different versions. In, yeah. Different versions, depending mm-hmm. on. Who I, it is. I, 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 so who it is in this one person I was speaking to said, I asked me about my educational level. And I, I said that I was this and suddenly they started speaking to me in different type of calligraphy and their their writing got fancier which meant that they were like oh so you're as smart as me or you I, oh you're of this level of education well i'm actually smarter than you and richer than you and so, are so you i'm saying- going to start talking or are you saying like they asked you a question like your character mm-hmm. and it was a selection of like what's your education level and you picked like college? I didn't have I didn't have to pick it like okay. my, so my education level was already preset and right, they were but like it's not is oh. it education based on your character or like you're selecting it as you? That's what I'm trying to figure out. Like, are you uh, selecting it or is it your character? Is that a certain I level? I don't that's remember. If I, I, I gotta be honest, I don't Day drinker re- starting to sound like a night drinker. I'm just saying Mm-mm, probably. Well, actually well, I was playing this during one. the day. So I that, mean, that's a, that. Yeah. Uh, in so gen- in general, the gameplay you select. Yes. So well, what I'm trying to tell you is like part of the game mechanics is that it sees what you are doing and goes, Oh, Oh, well I'm going to show you more of my personality and this is what's going to happen. So, Oh, that's cool. Or or if yeah, you talk so, to or if you talk to like um like let's say the the local peasants, their mm-hmm. font that they speak in is a lot simpler yes. and less ornate. It's more it, cursive. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So it 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 
is a whodunit. It's a murder mystery. Mm-hmm. So, but it is not your action adventure FPS. Like this, it is my style of game and I have been very much enjoying it. So if you're like looking for some crazy action, mm, but the visual effects that are portrayed on the graphics it it's it is very cool so if if you're not looking for something super super crazy but looking for something interesting you should definitely check it out so you get to choose like okay what what is my background i was like i got to choose like Oh, like I'm a physician or I'm a librarian or I'm an occultist. And I was like, I'm an occultist. Mm -hmm. And it was like, okay, so you get to choose a secondary. And I was like, a logician. Let's do that. Like, I I like math. I like logic. Let's go with that. And so that changes um, who's going to speak to you, what they're going to say, what your initial encounters are going to be. So it was fun. (laughs) So check it out. Sweet. If, That's if awesome. you're into that, check it out. What you well, got, Bruno? Well, speaking of action packed games. Oh, God. I've been if playing. I have to hear about Demon the Souls most or <laughs> sold game recently. Sold over <laughs> 13 million copies in between its initial pre orders and its following three days of release. God, no, it's not God of War, actually. It's Pokemon, <laughs> I was going to say God of War. Pokemon but... Scarlet and Violet, which outside uh, War, which should make you hate everything in the universe. I want them to never fix any bug in that game ever because I am loving all of the <laughs> short videos. Oh, boy. Pokemon yeah. Scarlet has been a roller coaster ride of a game. Um, I bought it because... First of all, I should preface this by saying because, I am, duh? I'm a part of the problem. I saw the initial <laughs> reviews. I knew the game was an absolute an absolute. Well, that, actually, you're not part of the problem then because you show. actually looked at reviews, like instead of just buying it, just because. But you I still to buy bought it. it in spite of the fact that it was a flaming pile of shit based on its reviews. But anyways, I saw the reviews, saw the complaints. I was like, it's still a co-op game. I've wanted to play a co-op game with Savannah. That's Pokemon for ages. It's gonna happen, whether. The universe is going to penalize me for it or not. <laughs> so we bought Scarlet and Violet. Savannah's been playing Violet. I've been playing Scarlet. That game, from a technical aspect, is a fucking mess. It's not cyberpunk level of mess, but it is a mess. <laughs> is it like, okay, so right. is it like explosive garbage on, on a scale of explosive garbage to just like steamy garbage you uh, you honestly have to bucket it okay from a from a technical aspect it is like a fucking dying star level of fucked up it, it is like a, a black Neutron hole tearing apart level. the universe it's so fucking bad it, like it runs at super abysmal FPS, pretty much no matter what you do. Um, it scales up to your TV and to your monitors like absolute shit. Um, it's just like it's not it's not well designed. It has a memory leak that exists in it that still hasn't been fixed. That makes it so that if you don't restart the game like a minimum of every four hours, it pretty much becomes completely and totally unplayable. Oh, um, Jesus. And the more the game lags, the more the game, lags, <laughs> yeah, the more like the game lags, the more everything goes to shit. Problem is, if you have a memory leak on a Switch game, yeah. that's rough enough. The Switch has four gigs of RAM. Yeah, uh, you're not gonna yeah, have Captain a good time. Um, and there was like a whole discussion of like it's the Switch's fault. It's not the Switch's fault. Somebody was like, if you run it on a PC via an emulator, everything runs great, and this thing doesn't have even a better GPU really than what the Switch has. And then like somebody asked the guy to link the specs, and the game, the computer had 32 gigs of RAM. And I'm like, oh, I'm shocked. That <laughs> well, I mean, even that, so like if you're releasing a, a game on a platform, said Switch that has four gigs of RAM, <laughs> it should work with four gigs of RAM. Like That's it's a true. Switch game. Exactly. That's true. 
So when I started the game, I was like, this, uh, it's Pokemon. So I got that nostalgia and it does have a lot of functionality to it. So I was like, it's, I'm going to give it a nice four out of 10. Eh, that's that's respectable. All things considered four out of 10. Hold on a second. And yet, uh, even with that, it's the fastest selling console exclusive ever. Yep. Wow. Not, not wow. Nintendo console exclusive. Across Nintendo, all Sony, and Microsoft. Exclu- all, all consoles. Wow. And you know Jeez. why? Because, damn it, their expansion on the formula of Pokemon, it works really well. Yeah, it just makes it really. Nuanced. It's really fun. It, it is really fun throwing out your Pokemon, letting it battle on its own, like getting into online raids with other people, um, playing with other players in their world, like me going around in Savannah's world and showing her to different places and stuff. It just, it does work from a gameplay perspective really well. From a technical perspective, it's it's dog shit. From a gameplay perspective, it's it's great to the point where I was like, wh- wh- now that I've gotten a lot further in it, I've beaten all eight gyms, I'm doing like the, the kind of more end game stuff. All my Pokemon are like level 70 to 80. I'm like, of course, decent ways into it. I know, right? I'm, I'm like, this is no longer a four out of 10. Despite all these technical issues, I'm willing to give this like a seven out of ten, which for me is very. That's a high. big deal. That's a big deal because that's like two points shy of God of War for me. So really, yeah? if the technical issues didn't exist, this would easily be like an eight point five or a nine, like without question. Um, so essentially, if I just hope- the technical issues didn't exist, so what funny shit have you seen? <laughs> Come there's, on. Um, there's an area in the game that you're not supposed to be able to go to until you do this battle thing with with another guy anyways. Um but I I unlocked a bunch of stuff with my legendary, so I scaled the wall all the way up to the top. And then I tried to fly down or glide down. And it kicked me out. And I was like, "No, you can't go there." And I was like, "Excuse you?" So I kept spam jumping into it and letting it reset and reset and reset and reset and reset. Turns out, if I did that enough, I felt like every time that I reset enough times, the game got laggier and laggier. At some point, I was like, you know what? Fine. Go in the hole. See if we care. And I ended up in, like, nowhere land. Um, <laughs> and I had to, like, reset to a much earlier save to get out of it, uh, which was hilarious because I was just, like, weirdly under the map and I was gliding. And I was just gliding for all of eternity. And it was, like, really weird because at, like, random intervals, I could see the entire world above me glitch into frame. And, Whoa. Out, and I was just like, hmm. And so what Brian is trying to say is that he would have his Pokemon at like 100, but he had to go back mm-hmm. to an earlier save, so they're only 70 to 80 right now. No. Uh, mm-hmm. it's, it's fine. But all in all, I haven't had too many bugs. All the bugs that I've had were bugs by sheer force of me doing something that I knew was stupid, but I just refused to stop doing because I wanted to see what would happen. Okay. Um, I didn't have any of the issues where like I threw out my Pokemon and then somehow I ended up getting sucked under the floor. That though I saw a lot of that. Um, but yeah, Pokemon Scarlet slash Violet. Uh, I think it's sixty bucks per game. Um, if you're not someone who's a fan of Pokemon and willing to put up with a myriad of technical issues that are never going to get patched, don't don't buy it yeah i'm i'm not i'm not i'm not gonna put my kids through that i'm not gonna put myself through that i'm not gonna do it No, i feel like handing that to a kid would be incredibly frustrating for them because they wouldn't understand why the game is reacting so sluggishly also why it looks so (laughs) terrible at times um i learned if you put mario kart on youtube and hand him the controller he'll think that he's playing there you go Genius. I don't I do that all the time. Boat on that. I don't do that all the time. But it's really easy when he's like, "All oh. right, I'm done with this. I want to play, you know, Baby Mario." And I'm like, "Mario Odyssey." I'm like, "Okay, next YouTube video, Mario Odyssey." Yeah. So to be clear, <laughs> oh, man. I had no surprises with Pokemon. Really, um, I guess I was slightly surprised that the gameplay was as fun as it was. But overall, I was yeah. like, "Yeah, I expected it to be." A shit show because Game Freak has 160 employees and is trying to push out a massive open world game in eight yeah. months since their last game. So this was bound to be a technological failure. Um, though, segueing into my second game off of that, a game that I expected to be kind of a shit show and has done nothing but surprise me at legitimately every turn. 
If you say Outriders again, I'll be pissed. No, that game's dead to me. There's <laughs> World of Warcraft, Dragonflight, the new expansion so far is actually the most fun I've had on WoW in Aww. any expansion ever, including Wrath of the Lich King. I love hearing that. The story has been really great. Um, there's like a lot of like backstory to previous characters throughout multiple expansions, including Cataclysm, known as the expansion that ruined it all. Um, so like the story's been awesome so far. Uh, I keep getting sidetracked because like a lot of the new game systems are just great. And they added a new major game system for the Dragon Isles, which is like the new map area called Dragon Riding. And it is probably the most fun game mechanic I have screwed with in an MMO like ever. You you legitimately have a dragon that you ride on and it has like special mechanics to it where you can glide with it and you can like charge forward or rise up and stuff with your dragon and you could do like dragon races and there's like speed trials there's little time trials where you can get like gold medals you get experience for it and like stuff to buy stuff from the renowned store um and so far one of the things i hate the most about wow and have hated the most about wow for years is that every expansion has gotten worse with the idea of you have to do these reputation grinds or these this time gated content like every day or multiple times a week. And if you miss a week, you're screwed and you're behind indefinitely, which is really frustrating. It seems like they removed all of that. Oh, wow. There are renowned grinds in the game, but now most of them are like, hey, yeah, if you do a renowned grind, then you get um, you get special cosmetics or special stuff for crafting. But you don't have to do these in order to further your progress in gearing for raids and stuff like that. So, uh, World of Warcraft Dragonflight is by far my favorite expansion in, like, I don't know, how long ago was Wrath of Lich King? Seven expansions ago? Something like that? Eight? So. That's cool. Uh, So far, it's like an 8.5, 9 out of 10 for me, expansion-wise. Very good. And last but not least, Phoenix Nova. The best game. I'm excited. Did you uh, play anything? So I've been playing a little game Uh-oh. Uh, that recently came out. Uh, GS. GS3. This is what I think it is, right? Uh, Goat Simulator yes. 3. Oh, Let's go. I saw some of this. Oh, my God. This looks like so much fun. We should play it together. I haven't seen footage of three yet, but yes, if it's anything like one because or two. they passed over two, right? That's the fucking joke. Like, yeah, there, there's, there was yeah, no two. there wasn't. A there's two? no two. No, there was no two. two. It's Goat Simulator. There was a two. Yeah, and then it's Goat Simulator three. Yeah, oh, awesome. And this is me playing, and this is me bouncing the uh, cop. Oh my god! The, and and this is like, dude. He he's on I, this air vent, and he just it just keeps going. <laughs> I was like, I was like, I just smacked this cop. And just, he's like, doing, doing, doing. I saw some of this. It, th- there was a hot air balloon or something, and it totally triggered my fear of heights. And like the or, or there was a goat on a trampoline and he, he get just kept they just kept getting higher and higher. And I was like, oh, my God. But it was hysterical. You go into like like ragdoll mode and like like. Blah, 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 and turn into other freaking animals. It looks funny. It looks hysterical. Yeah, I'm shooting fish out of the thing in my head. Um, I'm tr- I'm trying to like finish a quest here. <laughs> I'm trying to finish a quest here of like taking out these, like um, uh, uh, what was that movie with the uh, the robot wives? Oh, uh, yeah. Stepford Wives. The Stepford Wives, which was also a yeah. remake. Anyway, so mm-hmm, there's these yes. Stepford Wives. The other side of this door. I think some. They keep tr- they keep shooting me here. It bugged out like <sighs> weird, and then I then I somehow was able to take them all out just by shoving my head through the door, uh, which in and of itself was kind of hilarious. Do you have a horn? That is a that is a a Trident. that is. Poseidon's trident on my head and I can <laughs> shoot fish with it. Like I shoot out okay. fish and then okay. I'm going to pick up this mask 
And then I'm going to shoot the, like these laser balls that these ladies were shooting. You just pick <laughs> stuff up. Nancy's, Nancy's face. face. And it gives you like these new powers. So I'm shooting this out now. Okay. It, it's some crazy fun. It, yeah. It looks like you can do multiplayer almost as easy as you can do multiplayer in Fortnite. Like okay. joining your friends in looks about the same. It's, <laughs> it's ir- irreverence and, and just crazy dumb stupidity. There is a, like, not a quest, but they, they <laughs> oh call it, they, they do go. these, uh, like, like mini quest things, these things that you, you're, you're trying to do. Um, and one of them is you got it. You have a saddle on, so you have to get another goat on your saddle. And then well, while it shouldn't the, be hard because goats like to ride on other things. Well, you pick them up and the goat just starts ragdolling on you. And then, <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm driving now too, by the way, with my head. Oh. Hanging out. <laughs> but yeah, they, like, you you run around with this other goat in your saddle and you and you have to do a a front flip or a black back flip with the goat riding your saddle. It's just and it, and also oh and here I'll be able to shoot electricity. Oh you're too. you're oh yeah. Yeah you, you just definitely you have tons of fun with this. And you it just makes so many references. The opening of this game it is identical to the opening of one of the best games ever because okay. you start this game at almost as if you were a prisoner in the back of a oh horse drawn cart along <laughs> with other prisoners as the farmer's talking to you. Oh, like Skyrim? Is it, is it like that one? <laughs> that game? Oh, yeah, actually, I restarted Skyrim over the weekend. Actually, I didn't talk about it much because I didn't really play much, but. And so, it's Skyrim. The shit's like. like so yeah, and here, here I'm about to do a cooking competition thing that just popped up. This is all footage of me playing uh, 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 during Thanksgiving. Oh, that Jeff is. F- Some cooking mm-hmm. It's just you, you, you headbutt anything. There's and you're like, oh, you have to do this cooking competition now. So cooking class, let your taste buds. Uh, you can lick. You lick things to move them. So I figured out here oh what gosh. I need to do in a little bit, but. Yeah, it's yeah. Here, I'm trying to lick it. There we go. Mm, yep. <laughs> and I've now added it to the pot. It, yeah, I, Master Chef. I, I I purchased this, and you know I'm I'm big on Game Pass and doing a lot of Game Pass stuff. I purchased this, and it's well worth the purchase. It's okay. There you go. I finished the I finished the little quest right there. I, I I know it took a while for Goat Simulator to actually get on Game Pass, so it's definitely. So you're saying it's not on Game Pass? Yeah, I don't, yeah. I don't think this is on Game Pass. I, I purchased yeah. this on. Okay. Uh, actually, actually, I think it's only on Epic Games right now. Oh. Uh, and I forgot how much it was, but I think I here I just walked up that thing. Uh, I think I think it was like thirty dollars or something like that. I could be wrong. Yeah, I love your I think hat, it was though. about that. Yeah, I love your chef's hat. That's beautiful. Yeah, that's what I just got from doing cooking class. So it took, and then you can switch out what you're wearing. And there's this whole like, you have towers that you have to activate that open up parts of the map, like several of the games that we know of. And inside the tower, it is a, it is like quasi Illuminati style. And you had as you do different quests and tasks, you like unlock chains on this door and it expands your goat clubhouse with more things and makes it bigger. And it's like marble floored. But then it also has like stuff from your conquests in different rooms. And it, <laughs> it's it's crazy. Uh, uh, it's crazy. It looks fun. like a lot of fun. Yeah, it looks, it looks like, like a lot, lot of, fun. of fun. I would uh, I may purchase that. <laughs> mm-hmm. Uh, well, cool. I mean, it'd be great because then, you know, a bunch of us could get together in it and yeah. do crazy goat things. Crazy, crazy goat, goat things. things. Oh, man. It's never a bad idea to do crazy goat things. Well, that wraps up uh, what got our attention this week. Uh, as I said before, if you're not a fan uh, or not a friend of us on Discord, make sure to join. If We're going to have a if giveaway. If you're not a fan, don't yeah. join. But if you're a friend and if you're a, a fan, friend or a fan, or, a fan or just want or to join, a friend. or want a free T-shirt, uh, come oh. join our giveaway and see if uh, if you win. 
Uh, other than that, check out sasgaming.com where you can see all of our stuff that's available. Uh, also, patreon.com slash sasgaming where you can help us out a little bit more if you'd like to. Uh, different tiers available there as well. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. So next uh, podcast, we've got a couple things lined up along with obviously our holiday festivities we have to talk about that are upcoming. So we'll talk about some of that stuff as well. Jump the gun so on that. until then, you guys take it easy, take care, and we'll see you next podcast. See ya. See ya.